This is Michael's 1995 Saab 900SE. The story so far is that he was given it for free after a friend fanged it too hard and it stopped working. So we, like the dummies we are, loaded it up and took it back to the ranch. There, we looked a bit deeper and found some damage. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay. Do we want to do this outside? Is there more light outside? How can you see? I can see fine. No. Yeah. There's a second one. Okay. There's a third one. Okay. <laughs> that, ans that answers our question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a colonoscopy. Except there's more, there's more shit in there. <laughs> oh, that is dead. Wow. Uh, can, can you, you can you get around to see the wall? wall? Yeah. Maybe you might need to bend the wire a little bit before you feed it into the piston. Well, I'll just get it in all the way. What is that? That is. That's the valve. It's a valve sitting on a piston. It's sideways. Yeah, it's dug yeah. into the piston. And that's wow. That's, that's why I knew. It was... Yeah. So that's the valve there. Look at that. <laughs> so after that. We decided this car was too awesome not to fix. So we took the rubbish out of the car and got it ready for a new heart. Hi, glad to see you could make it. You tuned in just in time to see Michael hit the new engine with a mallet. After seeing what happened to the last engine, when it overheated, we decided we would take no chances and swapped out the old water pump. After cleaning off the surfaces, the new pump was installed, ready for its new life, circulating the green stuff. The serpentine bell was next. This General Motors V6 is very timing belt hungry. It's not unheard of this engine to need a new serpentine belt and a new tensioner pulley every 30,000 kilometers. To change the timing belt on this engine, you first have to remove the auxiliary belt pulley, and then you can loosen the serpentine belt pulleys, and after that, you are free to remove the belt, being careful not to move the overhand cam's toothed pulleys because you need to keep them perfectly aligned. You can make sure that they're aligned by using a cam alignment tool, but we're pop. So Michael just took his time and prayed that nothing moved. With the old belt out of the way, we then removed and replaced the belt tensioner and runner pulleys. With the tensioner and runner pulleys replaced, you can install the new belt, making sure to tension the belt correctly.
beautiful. It looks pretty taut, doesn't it, really? Yes, but that's a little bit too tight. So we'll just take it off a little bit. Okay. Now, two revolutions. We'll just make sure everything's lining up where we want it to be. Eighteen foot pounds. Eighteen foot pounds. Oh, could be. Say, so, I don't know. Sixteen. Fourteen point seven. Both very wrong. Oh, now we know. Yep. It's riveting. <laughs> Technically, it's uh, talking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this says newton meters on it anyway. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> we had this little one a while. It's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Now we can put the cover back on. And then we can fang it into the car. Ooh. Hopefully not as fast as <laughs> With the resident cool guy donning the fluoro, we decided it was time to drop an engine into a Saab. Pretty good, more that way. Yep. A little bit more if you can. Okay, that's good for now. Okay, just stop there. It's pretty much right where we need it once we get it up in the air. Cool. Have a look now. Tenja mobile workbench. It's not that mobile at the moment, the <laughs> <Ute's> broken. <Yeah. laughs> 
But yeah, so this is the um, this is the original manifold that came off the car when we got it so from the blown engine, and we took it apart because it is just full of stuff. I don't even know if you can see in there. Can't really see it, but hang on. But let me. Uh... Yeah, it's just full of just... engine gravel. Yeah. <laughs> Not, not the kind of thing you want, really. Um, so this is up in the sensor for the choke at the back of the throttle body. Yeah, it's just pulling my finger in, just pulling it out, like just, just yeah. gravel. Not, not exactly what you want to pull through into your system, like into your system. Yeah, and I mean it's the same in here. So this is your inlet manifold, and look at that. Ah, it's just, <laughs> it's crunchy. Yeah. Just bits of bits of piston, bits of valve, bits of drivetrain in general. I mean, we don't even know yet. We haven't opened it to have a look. Mm. But that's. That's, this is my life for the next hour or so, yeah. just cleaning this out, I guess. Just making sure that stuff doesn't get into your system. Yeah, you don't want that to go back. Yeah, that would wreak havoc on your, on your like, piston walls and stuff, or your cylinder walls. Mm. Delicious. This could take a while. Yeah, <laughs> this is what happens when you overheat your engine, I guess. Well, we still haven't really decided what caused the failure, but I would say it just overheated, given it had a piss of piston. A coolant leak anyway. And I think the coolant leak actually led to one of the valve guys pinching pinching the valve, which, you know, held it open, and it got smashed that way. Because the belt looks like it's still in the right spot, and that's mm. what usually goes with these engines. Yeah. Fun. the universe gave us a subtle reminder to fix the Saab by dropping a limb from the overhanging macrocarpa hedge. Yeah, so another day, some more work has been done. Michael just put the torque converter bolts in. Very exciting, that's all done. Just need to put some fluids in it. Need to fiddle with the exhaust bolts. Moved down here underneath the trees. So Michael got a bit of a shock yesterday. But yeah, all is well. Missed it by a meter, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Macro carpets, you gotta love them. Yeah. In there, checking out the new uh, battery terminal over here. Yeah, wicked. What are we doing, Michael? I'm annoyed. There's a bracket on the drive line that runs across the back mm. that goes on the back of the engine. It's kind of flopped down when the engine was going back in. Hmm. Uh, which means we can't flop it back up because the exhaust is in the way. So I need to take it off, move it around, and then put it back. And hopefully the gearbox won't leak too much at the end of it. Sorry, the transmission. We'll see. So I made this. <laughs> I made this to get in there. <laughs> now I'm going to crawl around the dirt. Oh. <laughs> but apart from that, it's looking pretty good. Oh. Got everything else plugged in, hopefully. Just kind of oh, roughly remembering where everything goes in. in. The back. Lovely. Got a manifold on. Airbags, air airbox on. Long day. Yeah, got all of the kind of HT leads and stuff in. Very exciting. Uh, one less long.
one extension in that, not one less one extension. extension. So you don't actually need to be constructed under here, but mm. Yeah, that's why it's good what I do for. Shouldn't need to. Yep. Stop. There's no fuel. There's no fuel pump. Like, turned all off. Turned on again. First try starting failed. With no electric fuel pump kicking yeah, in and no spark, cool. we were stumped yeah, I don't think we until we decided to go pump. with a hunch and bypass the old dealership immobiliser. But before we could go any further, we decided to attach the exhausts. Probably the uh, weird problem using aftermarket exhaust gaskets. Sometimes they're just a bit too small. Kind of cut out a bit where I'm walking in. I'll leave it in. <laughs> just see if you can get the fuel pump to go. Ready? Yep. I can't hear the fuel pump for the rest of the saying forever. Oh, there's a there's a hungry jacks like. Hungry Jack's cup. Hungry Jack's cup. <laughs> um, well, hang on. Let's. So there's no oil pressure light. No, I don't think so. Is it off? Is it off when you switch to accessories though? Is no, it there? Fine. There's there is a light. Is there? Cool. Yep. Cool. You switch it on. It should switch off. Yep. Okay. Any starters? Yep. Go for it. thinking that like there's just so much like coolant well, in that sitting for such a long time it's well, it's also exhaust like, could be full of coolant too because yeah. it exploded and yeah. shot all the crap through and the coolant would just sit in the pool in the exhaust yeah but i mean apart from it being noisy the engine so far seems to be okay like there's nothing really to indicate anything wrong with it except that michael owns it <laughs> that's not a problem with the engine though <laughs> the engine didn't choose this life <laughs> Man. I do wonder how much water is actually in it. In well, the that's, engine that's block full. itself. Yeah, yeah, but that feels very empty to me. Well, I guess you probably won't really know until it gets warm enough to heat up the thermostat. Because yeah. that, yeah, that doesn't feel like it's got anything, anything in the door. Where's the thermostat? Down under there. Get it there. Oh, wow, it does go for them. It's it's warm, but it's not hot. Like I can I can place my hand on it. Yeah. It's also wet. So you know. Wondering if it's worth like taking that out and filling it. Well, like, filling the whole system. Yeah, or yeah. just heat it up like normal. The thermostat will open, and then it will run through. Um, problem is. Yeah, but if there isn't enough water around the actual water jacket around the cylinders. See, that's just wet under there. Oh, you found my leak. Yeah. Yeah. So it's where the plug next to the yeah thermostat. Yeah, so. Just where you want it to be. 
buried the deepest possible. Right, so it's the big boy. I think so. Yeah, it is big boy. Yeah, it's not. It's not straight. The pipe clamp's not straight, so I might just need. Oh, it. those pipe clamps are garbage as well. Are they the hokey ones we found inside? No, they they're, they're the wonky as ones that came with the car. Okay. Hokey or wonky, take your pick. <laughs> it is also leaking oil, something. Yeah, like I think there. Christopher just fanged oil all over it. I did, yeah, it's fanged all oil over, over the there. Exhaust. Yeah, oh, okay. that was me. Yeah. <laughs> he made yeah. it rain with oil. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Man, that's so good though. It's so loud. <laughs> I'm actually kind of getting used to it already though. My, my ears are ringing. My ears are actually ringing. Yeah. It, it's, quieter, it's quieter here than it is at the back of the car. And the exhaust isn't attached. It is. Well, here you can't hear the exhaust over the noise that the engine's making. Yeah, I know. It's got pretty good no power. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, feel free to press the like and subscribe button. If you don't like our content, you should press it anyway, and that way you can remind yourself every month about how much you hate it.